Welcome to Wired to Hunt's Whitetail How-To's, where we provide a step-by-step -step tutorial for one important deer hunting task. Cell trail cameras are becoming increasingly ubiquitous. They're more and more popular, and for good reason. They are really handy. These trail cameras can get you the information you need right away, and without the downside of needing to walk into your hunting area repeatedly and physically check these cameras. The only thing to think about is that there are a few technological aspects with cell cameras that can make them tricky. If you don't think about them, they can cause you to have a number of different issues. So number one, making sure you've got a good cell signal. That is the crux of making a cell camera actually work, is getting that signal. So there's three things to think about on that front. Number one, making sure you are placing these cameras in spots where you are likely to get that good service. Typically, I'm gonna be taking those cell cameras to the high spots. I'm gonna be taking my traditional cameras into the low spots. Check your signal before you throw one of these up. What you see on your phone will not always match what you get on your camera. So what you need to do is make sure you test it out. Every different cell camera has a different process, but for example, with this Moultrie, you can go through here and actually send a test image. You really wanna do that before you put this camera out and leave it for weeks on end. There's nothing worse than putting a camera in a place that you're really excited about and then heading home and then it doesn't send you anything. That's frustrating. So that's something to think about. The third idea to consider, and this is something that probably isn't realistic for everyone, you can either get this with a Verizon data plan or an AT&T data plan. And you're gonna find many places have different levels of service of each one. So if you're in a position where you can have two cell cameras, one of each network, you go on your trip, you can pick whichever one's gonna work better in that area. That can be really handy. These suckers suck more juice simply because there's a lot more happening, right? They're taking the pictures just like your traditional cameras, but then they're uploading it to the internet and shooting it off. So that takes more power. So because of that, you wanna make sure you are thinking ahead of time and making sure you supply it with the right power. Always use lithium batteries for these. Lithiums are gonna last a lot longer. It's gonna save you a lot of headaches. Secondly, you wanna make sure you have camera settings chosen that are going to elongate that battery life. Definitely stick to photo mode. That's gonna suck less battery life. Many of these cameras will upload and send pictures immediately. So every time you want to send a picture, this has got to fire up the modem, ship those pictures off. That takes a lot of battery. I would prefer to have a once a day type of situation. It's going to save your battery life. Just to recap, I'm going to make sure that I place these cameras where I'm likely to get a signal. I'm going to test that signal. Maybe I'll bring different plan cameras out here so I can get an AT&T version or Verizon version. And then secondly, battery life. Get the best batteries you can. Make sure you're not uploading pictures too frequently. If you do those five things, these suckers can do a great job for you. They'll be tremendous tools in your whitetail kit. If you want more information like this, be sure to tune into the Wired Hunt podcast or the Wired Hunt Foundation's mini series. We've got new deer hunting know-how every week. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts.